Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of the Group L Round 2 match between Benbo Baggins and Fu Folle. We have a very exciting Lizard Man Mirror, identical teams. They've both picked 12 players, including a Chameleon Skink. They've both got two rerolls and an Apothecary. Benbo Baggins has the Black Lizards, he's won the toss, he's chosen to receive. And we can see here what the table looks like. Nabolo has beaten Dragu and Benbo, and uh, Fufole drew with Dragu in the first round. So Fufole is a little bit ahead at the moment, but you know, ben, like, you know, <laughs> the rats have been dominant. They have won. No, they haven't yet won the group, right? Because Fufole could win two and win the group. So Nabolo has qualified with a Skaven, um, and one Lizardman team will be joining him in the round of 32. I can tell you how these two chaps qualified. Benbo Baggins is from the UK on PC. He qualified through the season three official ladder. And Fou Follet is French, qualified through the MOL League, their Open 2024 competition. So there you go. Um, I'm also playing All World Alliance, um, not tomorrow, but on Saturday, yes. Um, yes. Right, let's see what happens on the ball. Mm, maybe you should have started that deeper to make the on the ball better. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's better than you've got blitz defense if it's higher up. Maybe higher up is better. Okay, solid D commits the crocs of to a flank. I mean, it's not. <laughs> Group Lizard Man, it is, it is indeed, yeah, so yeah, you're not using the Communion Skin to pick it up if you can help it, because he's moving seven, which is worse. Honestly, might not have even fielded him on, on, in the first time. Might not have even fielded him this drive. But getting the free catch attempt is really good, isn't it? Like, with Lizards, you've only got two rerolls. Oh, and failing the pickup can be really bad. Instant Apple, I like that. You know, going down a Saurus is pretty bad. So instant Apo. Oh, I think this was the target. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then six back here maybe. This was a. This was a choice. He's picked up the ball. Let me. Is he going to go for anything here? That was a costly um, bonehead as well because it let this guy walk away. Instantly into the skink. Doesn't get the removal, so can't break through. There was an argument for blitzing this one, right? So he could run through and get pressure on, but. Like you don't need pressure on, right? But it was it was an option. It was an option to get pressure on. Looks like we're going into a big old cage here. Which kind of makes sense having a big extended cage versus other like you know skinks because they can like dodge through small cages in one dice. You so you kind of want to make it so they can't get a two dice at all and also yeah a bit of a wider cage is a bit better you know a lot of people versus other teams you wouldn't have these two back players on right but if you didn't do that skinks could just like roll a couple of dodges and one dice yeah Oh, sorry, two dice here. I mean, they could still roll a couple of dodges, one, but they could roll just dodge everything through and two dice here. So, like, maybe he didn't need them because it was a lot of dice rolls to get a two dice, but it is a possibility that you've got to think about. Oh, pushes him into an extra hit and isolates the crocs to, um, to stop a skink and then realise that isn't what he wanted to do after all, so run away. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I feel like it was okay to keep them. I guess he didn't want to be like isolated on this king. Or like get blitz down. Yeah, I guess he thought he was going to get blitz with block, so. I don't know why the skink hasn't stood up yet. The skink could have just walked into its cage a long time ago. Yeah, it's a very stupid crocs, isn't it? A very stupid crocs. Like playing passively like this it makes the most sense, right? Because the person who engages is probably getting, gonna get punched quite a lot. And you might as well, you know, let your opponent be the one who does that. Ooh, wow, so he relies on the Crocs Blitz after after endlessly boneheading. And gets a removal. A glorious KO. Thanks to Mighty Blow. What a great skill. 10 out of 10. He does get knocked down though. Man, Lizard's mirrors are so weird. Oh, there's the punish for the croc splits and just ends the turn <laughs> in embarrassment. <laughs> A thrilling game of cat and mouse here. Or skink and skink. Rock splitters does nothing. You'll do nothing. Turn six. Benbo has to break through at some point. Oh my goodness, this cannot be a, a skink it cannot be a sideline cage, right? Because of the other skinks. So he's just gonna have to push a, a little a little probe down the uh, down the flank here no oh. just a little a very little probe Crocs blitz then, but didn't. Wow. Now, what does he have to do this turn? Three forward is scoring range, yeah, a double rush. Wait a minute. This is a gaping hole. That was. What you could say, you could call this a bit of a mistake from Fufole. And yes, it's a few rushes, but this is a uh, route straight through, isn't it? Does the dodges? He didn't move this last. Oh, he was based. He was based. So it was, it was quite a few dice, but still letting him straight through was a bit of a problem. Straight through the middle. Get stuff back and uh, defend a bit. 
cheeky uphill to make the skink dodge, e well, not only easier, negate the skink dodge if he gets the one in nine here. Huge crocs block. A very, you know, high risk, high reward kind of move. Hmm, I wonder if that skink had to be like here or here or somewhere. Oh my god, let's pause. Right, I can't see anything that's happening. We don't need the circles here, do we? Um, we can tell which are skinks and... Sorry, it's really hard to tell who's on which team. <laughs> the lizard mirror. Um... This is a bit tricky, isn't it? You really wanted to get the power there to free this guy up, I bet. What even is the play here? I don't know what the play. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, I mean. If he pushes him, then it's one, two, yeah, three, four, five, six, yeah, yeah, yeah. This should have been a, this should have been a block down, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, at the moment it's just a four plus jump. Well, no, this one's in the way, so it's a five plus jump. So the jump isn't the answer at the moment. It's not, it's not an obvious solve. This turn. Yeah, so that was a bit high risk by going for the his, his own. high risk, high reward. These are just kind of irrelevant blocks, right? Trying to cause some damage. It just does all the dodges. <laughs> It was only three dodges, he had dodge. And just didn't do anything. Anything else. Just did the three dodges and scored. Um, that was a bit... That had to be a better solve than that, I would say. But... I mean, that does work, doesn't it? You know, your movement ain't with stunty, so yeah, just do the dodges. <laughs> yes, that wasn't really a solve, yeah. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't really a solve. <laughs> On the ball. Oh, a blitz. No one turn then. Instantly smashes the skink who would have scored the one turn. No, no, this is just a one turn. Oh yeah, the it, the, um, the turns look a bit confusing. Oh, well, not look a bit. Are confusing on the UI makes it look dodgy on replays. It's never too obvious which turn it is. So I'm just gonna punch things. No one turn attempt possible. We could have a three dice here. Could we? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This could have been a three dice. But then he wouldn't get the two dice the crocs. So it's definitely better to two dice the crocs. Probably should have had a guy behind the crocs, right? The blitz. Probably should have put a guy behind the crocs. To protect him. Oh, we're going to foul. That makes complete sense, right? Because you've got 12 players. And I guess Foo Filet is just going for the draw now. 1-0 down at half-time. Playing for the draw. Not going to push for the win. Very risky to push for the win. Um, tell you what, great thing about Ben Baggins' team. Look at this. He's got the half wing cheerleaders. Glorious. Completely lame default cheerleaders for Fu Folly.
Gets the catch attempt. And gets another blitz! Oh, wow. And it's just a Crocs. Just an instant Crocs. Smashed. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, man. Instant Crocs smash. Oh, wow. Three plus without dodge. Two rushes without a reroll. Flip me, guys. And it doesn't move the last one to base him. Oh, it says four or six. Maybe he was only allowed to move four. Um, so that skink gets flattened instantly. <laughs> Halfling Cox, yeah. <laughs> Goes for the goes for the blocker. I feel like I would have definitely hit the crocs here, right? Would have put in the assist and just hit the crocs. Yeah, I need that. Did he think he still had the hit on the crocs? Because that was like putting in the assist to hit it, right? Because now it's just gonna get three D by the. Crocs, maybe. No, he hits the, uh, he hits the Saurus. And one in nines. So now, all of a sudden, we've got an out of position Crocs. And we've got the whole team moving up here and looking pretty comfortable for Foo Folly. Yeah, definitely blitz him to, to save the skink dodge. Definitely don't want to sk dodge skinks if you can help it. No. I think I would have got a bit further away from the crocs than this. Like, you know, trying to make him a bit relevant. Maybe like I caged the skink so he couldn't get two deed, and then like just you know, come over here. So like I, I understand putting in the skink to make these two two Ds, but I feel like these three could have been over here a bit more somehow. I guess the Crocs is blitzing, and that's why he hasn't stood up yet. And getting lucky with the crocs is definitely a way to win the game, isn't it? It's the pow. Smash, only a stun. Could have moved those two Saurus first, but never mind. Instant punch on the skink there. And an instant crocs block gets the pow, huge pow. And a 3D skink, this will definitely kill it if you've read Reddit. Oh no, it didn't kill him, what? I don't understand. It's funny, isn't it? It's turn 11 and there's no cast skinks. This, this isn't what Reddit told me. Wasn't there a board there? I thought he triple I thought he triple pushed. Yeah, triple pushed. Oh, Crocs fails. He might be left behind, so like now Fufale really wants to like try and leave him behind this turn, right? With him boneheading on the floor miles away. But 
it is easier said than done. I'm not a big fan of this constantly uh, facing Croxagos with skinks. Both both teams have done it. Oh, okay, go straight back to the Crocs. Well, I would have tried to get away from the Crocs while he was stupid, but we are three dicing a skink. It's Kaz. Reddit was Reddit was correct. Turns out. <laughs> You can just choose to cast them anytime you want. Perfect. <laughs> Very glad this wasn't my yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh! Tries a rush, there's one of his valuable rerolls. That feels like the first reroll of the game. <laughs> I don't know if it is or it isn't, but it feels like it was the first reroll of the entire match. Just blocking with block and dodging with dodge and there hasn't been much else. I don't know what the rush was for. Ah oh, yeah, that's true, yeah, the greed rule. Yeah, you don't really need a lot of rerolls if you just play super conservatively. I'm gonna croc blitz again. Nope. Just probably should have set up a while ago then. Gets the knockdown. No, you've got what? So you know, like, you know, people make mistakes and stuff, right? Stress tiredness, all of those kinds of things, but you know, for the viewers at home, that just shows, you know, turn ordering's important, right, that, that croc should have stood up ages ago. It's definitely wrong to have not stood him up ages ago if you're not going to blitz with him or anything. Turn 13, going really deep with that skink. Oh, I don't like this. It's only turn 13, you're rushing. Wow, this is a very aggressive move downfield. Oh, there's a 1D block by accident, I guess. Didn't, you know, didn't count assist or whatever. Thought that other lizard was on his team. Something like that. I'd imagine. Oh, skink. Is he going to go for the ball sack? No, because it'd be a minion dodges. It makes sense just to... Okay, no, it does. We are going for the ball sack. It is a million dodges, but we're going for it. And this is the this is the why I like you know the uh, this is why the eye cage is a pretty good idea, right? With skinks versus skinks because it just stops them rolling the dice to get the one D, well the two D ball sack. Like, if you eye cage, as in you have your skink with the ball here and a skink here and a skink here then they cannot get two dice on the ball whereas with this you know he could just try one at a time dodge 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 get the assist and get the two dice on the ball and um, so that was a hell of a ball sack there by Ben Bull Baggins it wasn't necessary to go for it right it could have all gone wrong for him and he probably is going to get somebody surfed so um but yeah it worked out pretty great for him but I, I didn't like the move by Fufole to like, you know, allow it, right? I'd have just stayed behind. You might need your blitz back to yeah, because there's a slight problem of a Croxagor and two Saurus on the ball. Yeah, so yeah, maybe he can't afford to surf. But maybe he still should have. <laughs> Surfing is really good. You know. Oh, 
Last re-roll and an uphill. Fails it. Skulls out. Now. Instant Blitz gets the full power. Punches him as well. Use that skin cup rather than a... Oh my god, there's another Kaz. Benbo looking absolutely dominant now. Oof. I mean, there is a time and a place for surfs, but it's still really good, right? It would have still been really good surfing there. Like, because there wasn't an immediate blitz recovery option on, right? So, like, just getting rid of a skink and dodging your other, your skinks towards the ball would have, would have been, I don't really think, much worse positioning than what happened. So, you know... There is that. Nope. Dodges, fails. And this is nearly over, isn't it? There is now only one skink in scoring range. And he's pushed and then surfed. Lovely. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> only just surfed. <laughs> Three skulls! Three skulls out of four dice. But the serve. That was good, wasn't it? Take the push and then go for the serve. That was definitely better than just. I mean, yep, even Elliot can say it's over now because there is literally nobody in range for Foo Folle. And that certainly keeps this group exciting. Yeah, there's like literally, there's only one skink left and it's completely behind the ball. So he's going to punch things. Oh. For these replays, I actually could have got the up-to-date table to show at the end. Um, maybe I should have done that, but I haven't done that. So I do apologise. But what I can tell you is Ben Ball Vikings has beaten Foo Folly 1-0. And carry on watching the rest of this turn. It's essentially pointless, but it is the World Cup. It's only once a year. You know, if people want to click some buttons and make things happen, fair play, right? I know I'm sorry, Christopher B. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I did prep tables, just not Two, I only prepped one table, which was the table before the match. But I could have also prepped the post-match table. I just can't do that on the real-life ones. The real-life, the live games. So there you go. So that is the match. Congratulations, Benbo Baggins. Commiserations, Foo Folle. And that means that Foo Folle is at the bottom of the table with Dragu, both with a one draw, no wins, one draw, one loss. Benbo Baggins, on the other hand, goes up to three points with a win and a loss. So, um, yeah. I mean, the thing is, before the round three matches, we'll have the up to, you know, we'll have the everybody on two games. I'll do it, I'll do a stream that like shows all the groups and what the third game is and what the standings are so like that's why i didn't do the tables now because they'll be like they'll be their own little video right like the one for the second round i'll do one of those for the third round as well um so yeah obviously napolo in the driving seat but benbo Bakins is like favorite to join him right on three points so um there you go right thanks for watching everybody don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic